going to talk about my work that I started um, uh, uh, during my first postdoc in Israel. And this work uh, is, uh, is done in collaboration with my mentor uh, there, Professor Ehud Meron. Uh, his PhD student, Omar Zook, uh, one of our collaborator who was from uh, the eco uh, ecology department, Mirav uh, Sifan, and uh, another postdoc in our group, Christian uh, Fernandez Otto. So, uh, so this is a collaborative work, and we started working uh, on on this particular project uh, uh, in from uh, 2017, and we got some very real, uh, very interesting results. Uh, so uh, I'll study. Uh, uh, so so I'm going to discuss some of those results uh, with you today. So okay. Let me see if I can change the slide. So is it uh, coming in full screen mode? OK, now it's uh, it's in a, a full screen mode, right? Yes. Yeah, OK. So this is going to be the outline of, the, of my talk. Uh, since we are dealing with the uh, ecological systems, so first I will uh, introduce by uh, discussing, uh, by asking some important questions that we want to address through our study. Uh, uh, and uh, and then we will we will uh, move forward and discuss the models the mathematical models that uh, that we have uh, considered uh, uh, to address these questions and what are the important observations that we have found so uh, so the main question that uh, that I'm going to address. Uh, 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 in today's talk is related to oscillation because my PhD was related uh, to uh, syn synchronization and pattern formation in networks of oscillators. So, uh, so my interest was to uh, look at these ecological model to see if there is a possibility of uh, oscillations or oscillatory modes in such models. So, uh, so, so I'm going to discuss. Uh, 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 discuss that what is the possibility of having oscillatory modes in these vegetation models and uh, and then uh, what could be the implications of these oscillatory modes or persistent oscillations and how can these uh, uh, these results they can convert into ecological outcomes uh, 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 in in the context of uh, these uh, these uh, uh, vegetation models so as we will see that uh, these oscillation, they have uh, very important uh, consequence uh, that can lead to early collapse of vegetation. So what do we mean by this early collapse of vegetation uh, that we are going to uh, discuss? And also, uh, we will also touch upon a very, uh, uh, very important and trendy topic uh, that deals with early warning signals of these collapse. So what are the phenomena or the precursor uh, of these collapse? Uh, we are going to see some aspect of that study also. And at the end, uh, I will just conclude. So, OK, so, so normally when uh, um, when we talk about ecological system or ecology, uh, one of the very general and important question one asks is that how the abiotic external physical environment it affects uh, the ecosystem functions. So by abiotic environment we mean the external physical environment. Uh, so that includes. Uh, so we we will be mainly talking about in term. Uh, we will be talking in terms of plants. So for plants, abiotic environment means availability of water, availability of light, uh, the ambient uh, temperature, availability of nutrients, the humidity in air, uh, in soil, and also because uh, uh, plants, uh, uh, their growth and uh, their biomass production, it also depends upon the soil type. So, so all these factors, 
uh, they constitute the abiotic environment uh, 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 for for a plant ecosystem. So we ask this question that how this abiotic environment it affects the growth of plant and hence the ecosystem response. So the ecosystem response is usually in terms of uh, growth of of the plant. So we can either look at this growth on a uh, on on an organism level, or if we are considering uh, um, many plant species, then this response uh, of the ecosystem they can be seen on on the community level and this ecosystem response it translates into the ecosystem uh, function so the ecosystem function it uh, it can be at the organism uh, organ organism level meaning uh, the phenotypic changes that occur in individual plant or they can be at the community level that leads to different pattern formation if we are considering uh, large landscapes uh, so these patterns they can be of different types they they can be of uniform vegetation they can be stripe patterns they can be uh, dot patterns they can be gap patterns so uh, so all the uh, all these uh, changes in the uh, abiotic environment they manifest into this kind of pattern formation uh, uh, if we see the ecosystem uh, on a large scale so here as i said that uh, that we were interested in uh, finding uh, 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 the possibility of uh, uh, of temporal oscillations in plant population. So, uh, so if we if we talk about um, uh, uh, if uh, models of population, for example, animal population in general, so there have uh, so there are studies uh, uh, where people have found oscillations in animal population. For example, in models uh, such as Lot uh, Lotka Volterra kind of uh, model, they have found that there are oscillations in uh, uh, in animal population. But uh, as far as plant population is concerned, uh, uh, the existence or the possibility of oscillation have not been uh, looked at. Uh, 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 in a great detail and there is not much literature on that that people have uh, uh, studied or uh, reported oscillations in plant population so that was uh, that was our uh, uh, our main question that we wanted to address that whether plant population uh, uh, can have persistent uh, temporal oscillations or not so the next question then uh, uh, that one can ask is that if um, if there are oscillations, uh, then uh, what could be the origin of those oscillations? So so then we have to identify that there could be uh, uh, there could be uh, two types of uh, uh, of processes or factors that could govern these oscillations. So one is the endogenous factor, and the other one is exogenous factor. So Sorry. So endogenous factors uh, are basically density dependent processes. So what do we mean by density dependent processes is the processes that control uh, uh, the growth of individual plants. So endogenous factor will include the, the growth rate of the plant, the mortality rate of the plants, uh, and so on. So these are endogenous factors. Uh, so, so these are species dependent. So, a particular species will have a certain uh, growth rate or uh, or mortality rate, or their ability to take water from from uh, uh, from the soil, or they will have a certain evaporation rate, so on and so forth. So, these are endogenous factors which are uh, which are specific to uh, plant plants of a certain species. The other category is of exogenous factors. So exogenous factor uh, basically involve environmental processes uh, or environmental factors. For example, rainfall. So, uh, so as we know that rainfall is not uniform throughout the year, so there is a certain periodicity in rainfall. So, so uh, during the year, there is certain uh, uh, 
a certain months or time when the uh, when the rainfall is more as compared to uh, other period uh, period during the year uh, and and there is and this pattern it uh, it follow a cycle so so this cycle of uh, of rainfall or this rainfall periodicity it can also affect or it can also induce oscillation in plant population or or plant growth so these were the two main factors uh, that one could uh, think of which can contribute uh, towards uh, 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 towards the existence of these temporal oscillations so while the role of endogenous factor in inducing oscillations uh, in animal population this is very well documented uh, as i said in uh, like lotka voltera kind of uh, systems they they are very well uh, they have been studied uh, uh, so and there are very uh, a lot of variant of uh, those model also in uh, that includes uh, one kind of species and many species and so on uh, but uh, in plant population these both of these factors and their role is not very well, well understood so we we in this study we try to do that so uh, so one of the challenge uh, and one of the reason why this has not been studied in uh, 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 in in plant population is that that it is very difficult to segregate these two kinds of factors endogenous and exogenous factor uh, especially in field studies so in field study you just make observation and uh, this observation they span over many many years and then it's very difficult to uh, difficult to actually uh, uh, actually segregate that the if even if there are some cyclic patterns in in the growth of these plants whether they are due to the endogenous factor or they are due to the exogenous factor so for this purpose uh, there are many uh, many vegetation model one can uh, study one can start with but we we started with a dry land uh, vegetation model uh, so one of the motivation to uh, Uh, to take this model this veg uh, dry land uh, vegetation model was that here uh, here the rainfall periodicity uh, it is very well defined so so the wet period are extremely wet and the dry period are are like totally dry so this this variation in the rainfall periodicity it is very distinct and also there are dry, uh, there are uh, dryland uh, vegetation models that are uh, that are easy to study and also uh, also uh, uh, also we can find ways to uh, to separate uh, endogenous factor from exogenous factor so one of the way to model the exogenous factor is in in terms of uh, the external temporal forcing so so i so uh, mathematically how can we do that in in the model equation that i will just show you so so another motivation that why we choose uh, dry land uh, ecosystem is that that in general it is very important to study uh, study any phenomena uh, in the context of dry lands because dry lands cover two fifth of terrestrial land and they are also home to over one third of world population and uh, it has been found that these dry land vegetation model they uh, and these uh, they they show different patterns so as you can see in this over here so they can they can form different patterns so they could be uh, so these pattern they are, these are uh, uh, famously known as the fairy circle circle patterns and uh, then there could be gap patterns there could be dot patterns so there are a lot of uh, pattern formation involved here so the theory of pattern formation that that we know from uh, from other fields like uh, uh, fluid dynamics and uh, and uh, other areas they can be applied over here and also as i said that annual rainfall vari variability is more uh, uh in in dryland ecosystem so 
so how how do we uh, how do we introduce this uh, 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 this exogenous factor over here so it is through uh, through the introduction of this seasonal uh, rainfall or the periodicity in uh, in the rainfall so i will just come straight away to uh, to the model equation because i think that will uh, that will be good so this the the model equation that we have considered uh, so this uh, model has been uh, taken by um, it, it, it is taken from the famous uh, model by by gilad so the original model it was a three dimensional model so it has it had three variables uh, biomass b uh w the uh, the water uh, the underground water content and there was another factor in the original what uh, in the original model uh, that represents the overland water flow okay but here we we have tried to take the simplest model possible uh, so here we have just uh, uh, by assuming uh, a few things we were able to uh reduce the three dimensional model to to the two dimensional one so here we have made the uh, the following assumptions so we have considered flat terrain so uh so by considering flat terrain then uh, then uh, we can just remove this uh, uh, the water uh, the uh, overland water flow term because then uh, 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 then there will be the overland water flow will be uniform so they will just uh, like it will just decouple from uh, from the other two equation we have also considered confined routes in lateral direction so uh, so by considering uh, 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 this confined routes uh, in lateral direction we were able to make some simplification in the model so if i just uh come uh, to these equations so 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 in this model there are two variables one is the biomass density so this is this is in uh, this is a dimensional model these equations are for the dimensional model so b is the biomass density and w is the underground water and the unit of these two variables um they are in kg per meter square so the, these are basically the aerial uh, densities the first term in the biomass uh, uh, biomass equation so here this delta t they represents the time derivative so so these are the two uh, two equation that represents that how biomass uh, density and underground water density it changes with time so if we look at the biomass equation then the first term it is a growth term the second term it represents the mortality term and the third term it represents the diffusion uh, that uh, so so basically this term the third term here uh, it represents that how the biomass increases due to the seed dispersal from uh, one place to the other now coming to the water density uh, term so here the first term it represents the precipitation so it includes uh, information about rainfall or uh, uh, or the water availability the water uh, that uh, uh, that the ground gets from from any any source it could be rainfall it could be snow dew uh, or anything so p is the precipitation the second term it represents the loss of water from the ground uh, due to evaporation this third term it represents Uh, the loss of water uh, from the ground uh, due to water uptake from the plants so this third term represents the water uptake uh, 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 quantity and the fourth term it represents diffusion of water uh, uh, inside the soil so when uh, uh, 
when the roots of the plants they take water from one part of the soil then the water from the adjacent part of the soil it diffuses uh, to that area so this uh, this represents the diffusion of water uh, of uh, 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 diffusion of water inside the soil so while formulating this equation this model there are various feedbacks that have been considered so basically here there is a uh, uh, there is a positive feedback between local vegetation growth and water transport towards growth area okay so so if there is more water that gets transported uh, uh, to to a particular uh, region of the plant then there will be more growth and if the, if there is more growth of the plants then uh, then the plant will be able to take more water from the ground so there is a positive feedback bet between these two factors and the the uh, this uh, positive feedback has been incorporated in uh, in those equation okay so uh, so the uh, this positive feedback it can be categorized into three categories uh, so one is uh, due to the infiltration contrast uh so by infiltration contrast we mean that uh, if there is uh, there is overland water flow then the water will it will infil infiltrate more into the ground where there is uh, there there are plant where there is biomass and the water will infiltrate or get into the ground less when where there is no biomass so so in a way there is an infiltration contrast between the region where there is a biomass there is a plant and where where there is no plant okay sorry uh so another uh, another feedback is due to the water uptake uh, uh, by the roots of the plant so so if the plant is uh, able to take more water then it grows more and if it grows more then its uh, its root extend uh, to the la larger section of uh, of the soil and then it is able to take more water so so uh, so there there is a po positive feedback uh, between water uptake and the growth of uh, uh, growth of the roots in the plants okay so similarly there is uh, another feedback that takes care of this uh, uh, that includes this uh, uh, soil water diffusion so if there is more soil water diffusion then uh, if there is more uptake by the uh, uh, uptake of water by the roots then there is more soil water diffusion and if there is more soil water diffusion then uh, plants are able to take more water from the ground so so these uh, feedbacks were taken into account while uh, while formulating this this model so now if we uh, look at these terms in these two equation more carefully then uh, uh, so first in uh, uh, in the equation for biomass the first term here uh, this capital lam lambda it represents uh the biomass growth rate uh capital k it represents the maximum standing biomass so uh, uh, so all these uh, all these uh, parameters they are specific to a particular plant species so there is a maximal uh, 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 biomass that a, a plant can grow and attain it cannot grow beyond that so that is represented by this factor k this capital e it represents uh, the root to shoot ratio in the plant capital m represents mortality the rate of mortality db is the diffusion uh, uh, coefficient uh, for the seed dispersion in the water equation p represents uh, precipitation capital n represents the evaporation rate so this evaporation uh, 
this evaporation is from uh, from uh, uh, from the soil that reduces uh, the water content in the soil and uh, this capital r it is uh, it is the shading parameter so uh, so basically it incorporates the fact that suppose we have a plant so it it gives some shading uh, to uh, to the soil or the land below it and because of that shading uh, there is la less evaporation so that is taken care of by this uh, this parameter capital r gamma represents uh, the coefficient uh, the water uptake coefficient so if gamma is more for a species then the species uh, species of the plant uh, the plant species is able to take more water from the ground so gamma uh, decides that how efficiently a plant is able to take water from the ground uh capital e is again the root to shoot ratio so if uh, the root to shoot ratio is more then the water uptake is more for that particular species dw is uh, is the diffusion coefficient for uh, soil water diffusion so basically this is the model uh that we consider so this is a dimensional model uh, so all all the variables all the parameters here they have uh, uh, realistic dimensions uh, but for our simulation uh, uh, purpose we don't use the uh, dimensional model we use the non dimensional model so for that we do some rescaling of parameters so this is the rescaling that we have used and uh, then we arrived at this non dimensional model so in non dimensional model uh, uh we get rid of some uh, uh redundant uh, parameters and we we arrive at at uh at these equations so basically we uh, simulate these equations so now um so this is this is our model uh but since we wanted to do some analysis uh, so we thought that okay let us reduce let us simplify our model uh, a little more uh so this so uh, so basically if we look at this equation so the biomass term so if we look uh, if we try to find the uniform solution for for these equations so they have two uniform uh, solutions the spatially uniform solutions uh, one correspond to b equals to 0 so b equals to 0 means biomass equals to 0 and that corresponds to the bare soil solution where there is no biomass okay and, and the other solution it corresponds to b not equal to 0 and if we do not consider um, these uh, spatial terms that means if we are considering uh, spatially uniform solutions then then this uh, b not equal to 0 branch it corresponds to a uniform vegetation state so so we can have in general two states in the system two solution for the for the biomass uh, corresponding to b equals to 0 and b not equal to 0 and if we also consider this uh, 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 the spatial terms then we can have spatial inst instabilities uh, uh, to uniform vegetation states and then uh, then we can observe different uh, kinds of patterns also so so this is so in the lower panel uh, this is the bifurcation diagram that has been drawn so on the x axis we have the precipitation and on the y axis we have uh, the average biomass so as we can see that when precipitation is very low when the rainfall is very low when in general the precipitation is very low then there is only one solution that exists and that is stable which which correspond to b equals to 0 the bare so, uh, soil solution is stable and as we increase uh, the the precipitation then this bare so soil solution it becomes unstable it exists but it it is unstable and uh, a vegetated uh, a st state it bifurcates from this uh, 
uh, from this solution and this vegetated state depending upon other parameters that uh, it it can have uh, uh, it can have uh, different patterns or it can be uh, this uniform uh, vegetation state okay so so the dashed line over here the dotted line over here it represents uh, the region where we can have these uh, different patterns and the solid line over here it represents uniform vegetation state okay so now we will see that under what condition we can have these uh, different kinds of uh, states okay so so this is our uh, non dimensional model so in 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 our non dimensional model if we say that okay let us simplify it uh, uh, it uh, some more and in the case when this eta and rho this is zero if both these parameters are zero then we get a super a critical bifurcation so this uniform uh, vegetation state it bifurcates from the bare soil solution super critically so this is the special case when eta and rho both are equal to 0 and we also find that when it bifurcates uh, uh, at at some value which we can calculate uh, of uh, some value of precipitation so here there is a threshold for precipitation uh, then the this uniform uh, 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 this uniform vegetation uh, they have uh, some oscillatory modes and these oscillatory modes they are damped in nature okay so so in the inset this uh, damped oscillatory modes have been shown but for finite uh, eta and rho or even if uh, uh, only one of them is finite we can get subcritical bifurcation so this is the subcritical bifurcation with respect to precipitation p so there is a finite region where uh, both the bare so soil solution and this uniform vegetation uh, solution uh they they are both stable uh so if we start with uh, with a precipitation with some high precipitation over here uh and we start lowering the precip precipitation then um uh, then in some cases uh, it uh, it happens then that uh, uh, uh that the species having finite biomass it simply collapse to bare soil so this bistable region uh, it is very important uh, uh, in terms of the stability or the resilience of the system because once the system collapse once the biomass collapse uh, to the bare so soil solution then uh, then even if we we change the precipitation uh, by some value it is not able to recover uh, to the vegetation state so these this eta and rho they induce uh, uh, these positive feedback uh, so eta is the positive uh, feedback due to the root to shoot ratio uh, 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 in in plants and rho is the feedback the positive feedback that is uh, due to the uh due to the evaporation uh, uh evapor evaporation or shading uh, shading of uh, of the plants so rho denotes the shading feedback and eta denotes the root to sh shoot ratio uh, feedback so yeah so the important point here is to note that even if uh, one of them is uh, is non zero then the bifurcation goes from super critical to sub critical so now if we focus on the super critical case which is which is a simple case and so these uh, these bifurcation uh, uh, diagram these are for constant precipitation so here 
we are just studying the effect of uh, the endogenous factor uh, uh, on the dynamics of the system. But what happens if we uh, we introduce uh, the exogenous factor also in terms of uh, periodic forcing? So how do we introduce that uh, uh, endogenous factor that we now we make the precipitation which was constant earlier now we make this precipitation time dependent so we have defined it in this form so a represents the amplitude of the forcing and omega f represents the frequency uh, of the forcing of the external forcing uh, that corresponds to the uh, to the periodicity in the annual periodicity in uh, the rainfall so so in this case uh, this equation, they have two solutions. One correspond to uh, uh, the bare, bare soil solution, B equals to zero. And other corresponds to um, uh, the uniform vegetation solution, solution. So this is easy to calculate. And We can also arrive at the condition where we can have uh, these oscillatory modes. So one can write the, uh, the Jacobian for these equations. And from the Jacobian, uh, the characteristic uh, equation uh, about the vegetated state. And this will give us uh, the condition uh, uh, to uh, to obtain uh, the oscillatory modes so the eigen value comes out uh, comes out to be in this form minus alpha plus minus i omega so alpha for all the values of uh, uh, all the realistic values of these parameters alpha is always positive so that means that uh, uh, that the eigen values they are imaginary but with negative uh, real part so that means that these modes are damped modes. And the frequency of these damped modes, uh, they depend upon the, uh, the mean uh, precipitation P and, uh, and the other factors in other parameters in the system. So, so the, uh, in the case of, uh, so these damped modes, they can also be, uh, uh, studied using uh, 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 using the multiple time scale analysis. So you so using this uh, analysis, we can derive the amplitude equation. So uh, so the amplitude equation it gives us the amplitude of oscillations uh, about the uniform uh, uniform vegetated state. So these damped oscillatory modes that we have just seen. So these damped oscillatory modes, they are present in, in the system when, uh, when there is no external forcing. But when we apply the forcing, these damped oscillatory modes, they get enhanced, they get pumped, and we have persistent oscillation in the system. So this is... Uh, So we have persist persistent oscillations in the system, and we can study the amplitude of uh, the oscillation with the, uh, with this parameter nu. So nu represents the mismatch uh, between the frequency of the system. So so this omega, so nu is omega minus omega f. So this represents the uh, mismatch between frequency, uh, the intrinsic frequency of the system and uh, the forcing uh, frequency uh, of, of the external uh, drive. So if we plot the amplitude uh, with respect to uh, this mismatch, then we find a peak uh, roughly at nu equals to zero when the intrinsic frequency is almost equal to the forcing frequency. So, uh, so this, is, uh, this is similar to having the resonant behavior or resonant, uh, this represents the resonant response of the biomass. And since 
uh the intrinsic frequency it depends upon uh, precipitation p as we can see from this uh this equation for omega from this equation so hence this re uh, resonant response it is also evident uh uh when we plot biomass amplitude with respect to uh uh with respect to mean precipitation pm okay so then also we can see this uh, uh this peak in the amplitude okay so so this is for the the, the supercritical case so what happens in subcritical case so as we have seen that uh, so there are two basically two feedbacks that converts uh, sub uh, supercritical uh, uh, bifurcation to subcritical so one feedback uh, is associated with reduced water loss by evaporation at as plants grow uh so so it basically means that uh, if we have small plants like seedlings they may not be able to survive at low rainfall because of high evaporation but grown up plant uh, reduce the evaporation rate by shading and benefit from an increasing water content as they grow so this feedback is quantified by parameter rho similarly other feedback is associated with with water uptake by plant roots so while the roots of the seedlings uh are too small to capture enough water from seedling growth the roots of grown plants uh they are large enough uh, to capture more water and to have a sustained growth so this feedback is associated uh with eta and it is known as the root to shoot uh, uh, feedback so so this subcriticality uh, 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 subcritical instability or subcriticality in the bifurcation it leads to hysteresis loop because there is a bistability between two state and it also leads to loss of resilience because the system can abruptly uh, collapse to bare soil uh, solution from a vegetated state so that is why it's important to study this case also so if we do that uh, so now we consider finite uh, values of rho and eta and to study that what uh, uh, rho and eta uh, how does rho and eta affects the dynamics of the system separately we we construct two types of species so one is the rho species uh rho species of plants and another one is the eta species of plant so basically by rho species we mean that uh, these species they are represented by equations where rho is finite but eta is zero similarly for eta species we have eta uh, eta is having some finite value where rho is zero uh so in in this case what we observe that th that this rho species they have this kind of uh, bifurcation diagram with precipitation p but they do not have a uh, damped oscillatory mode so in the absence of uh, periodic forcing they do not uh, they do not have a, a damped oscillatory mode but this eta species they have damped oscillatory mode so it has been shown here in this inset so now uh, uh, so now uh, we can also investigate now we have two types of species now we can investigate that Uh, that how these two types of species one that have damped oscillatory modes and the other species that do not have these modes how they respond to uh, uh how how do they respond to the external forcing which is represented by the rainfall periodicity or or how these uh, exogenous factor they influence these two kinds of species so if we do that 
and we plot the eigen value uh, so this is this eigen value this is just to show that uh, this row species because uh, uh, they have like zero uh, so solid line uh, represents uh, the imaginary part of the eigen value whereas dashed line uh, shows the real part of the eigen value so this is just to show that uh, row species they have uh, they do not have uh, uh, oscill uh, oscillatory modes whereas eta species does have uh, uh, oscillatory modes because they have finite imaginary uh, part uh, in the eigen value so now if we look at the biomass amplitude so now in the presence of uh, the external periodic forcing so if we look at the biomass amplitude of uh, these two species with uh, with the average precipitation so just to recall that this average precipitation so it it occurs here so this is this is p sub m so so if we plot uh, biomass amplitude with uh, with this average precipitation then we find that both eta and uh, uh, rho species they show a peak uh, in biomass amplitude with p but this uh, this peak is more pronounced in the eta species so this uh, this peak is more more pronounced in the species where uh, where we have osc uh, damped oscillatory modes but this peak is uh, is is not that prominent in the other species that uh, lack uh, these oscillatory modes and similarly here also we can see that the amplitude of the species with oscillatory modes it is much more the variation is much more whereas uh, the amplitude variation in the bio biomass species with no oscillatory modes they don't have that much uh, variation uh so so now i mean if if you uh, i think I, uh, yeah if somebody have some questions so they can just interrupt me and uh, ask Uh, so, so are you with me yeah, yeah. let them ask at the end of the talk oh okay 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 yeah, yeah so yeah so this uh, by stability and uh, 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 by stability between um, uh, the bare so uh, soil solution and the vegetated state and uh, uh, and the external forcing it has very uh, interesting uh, implication so Uh, so what does that uh, these oscillations uh, 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 do that they lead to the early early collapse of uh, uh, of the biomass so if we look at uh, uh, these figures so so on the on the top panel we have ro row species and these three figures uh, say three uh, three curves they have been plotted for different values of uh, Uh, forcing amplitude a so a is 0 in this uh, in this curve for the the extreme left curve a is 0 so so here the species collapse at say this point p1 but as we increase the forcing amplitude then the species collapse at a much uh, much higher value At, at a higher value of precipitation if we further increase the forcing amplitude it collapses it can collapse at a much higher uh, value of precipitation so uh, this external periodic forcing uh, that is similar uh, similar to uh, this uh, rainfall periodicity uh, it induces oscillations that can result in the early collapse of biomass so if the forcing amplitude is more then the bio uh, then the species the plant species can collapse early so this is for row species uh, similarly 
we can see the similar behavior in eta species but here in eta species what happens is that this shift of uh, the collapse point uh, it is much more drastic so this shift is uh, much more uh, in eta species as compared to the rho species so it means that the eta species they are less resi resilient to uh, uh, to the external disturbance so this external disturbance can be in terms of uh, the rainfall periodicity or uh, or or as we will see that it could be some local disturbance also so 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 uh, so what we can conclude here is that uh, due to uh, the os oscillatory modes of uh, 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 due to the presence of oscillatory modes it makes the species less resilient because uh, it leads uh, to oscillations which are very high in amplitude and hence uh, they can uh, uh, they can collapse uh, early at at a much higher precipitation value so here the average biomass and uh, uh, the saddle node point so saddle node point uh, the saddle node means the precipitation value at which uh, uh so saddle node node point at which this uniform vegetation it loses a stability so this is the p saddle node this is a p saddle node at uh, uh, at a equals to 0.5 this is p saddle node for a equals to 1 so so here we have plotted that how this uh, 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 precipitation corresponding to the saddle node bifurcation it changes so as uh, we can see over here that uh, this p saddle node it changes much more drastically for eta species where we have oscillatory modes whereas the change for rho species is not that much similarly uh, the average biomass the change in average biomass with the forcing amplitude a is much more in the eta species and it is it is less in the rho species so the effect of uh, the external forcing is much more on the eta species than in the rho species so so now we can also uh, uh, also consider uh, that how does uh, 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 how does this external forcing or this exogenous factors how they influence the spatial patterns so up till now we have uh, we we have uh, not consider the spatial terms but now if we consider the spatial terms and if we want to see that how the spatial pattern uh, their dynamics changes if if we consider this external periodic forcing uh, in the precipitation then then we we have these equations so so considering these spatial terms it allows for uh, uh, for strongly uh, uh, so it allows for uh, uh, non uniform uh, 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 instabilities uh, and uh, and it it can lead to pattern formation uh, so so if so here uh, what we do that we start with a non uniform initial condition so on the x axis we have space and on the y axis we have time so so at t equals to 0 we start with the with non uniform state so half of uh, half of the space uh it consists of uh, uh uniform biomass and half of uh, the space uh it corresponds to the bare soil b equals to 0 and then we study that how 
this non uniform uh, state it evolves with time so as here we can see that so we study uh, this for both the species eta species and rho so if we see these patterns for eta species then when a is zero so a equals, equals to zero means that, that the precipitation is constant so there is no periodic forcing then uh, then we see that uh, that there is uh, there is a front that is propagating in this direction so the vegetation front it propagates and it uh, it reduces uh, the bare soil front and one can calculate the velocity of this propagating front so this is when the precipitation is zero uh, when the precipitation is constant when there is no periodicity in the precipitation but when we introduce the periodicity when we introduce the forcing in the system then we see that uh, then there then there are uh, patterns there are spatial patterns that are forming and uh, and as we increase uh, increase the strength of the forcing then uh, the vegetation these patterns uh, they start to convert into uh, as the time progresses we just have uh, b equals to 0 bare soil solution so all the vegetation uh, they first go into uh, this uh, uh, this uh, horizontal stripe like pattern and then the vegetation disappear and we have just bare soil solution so this is for eta species uh, so something different happened for uh, row species so here for a equals to 0 the behavior is more or less same although the speed of the front is uh, is uh, is lower uh, as compared to what it was for eta species but uh, for row species as we increase the forcing strength then again these horizontal uh, stripe patterns they appear and and here as we keep on increasing uh, the forcing strength then here we observe that uh, that the direction of the wave wave front propagation it changes so so here this was the direction of wave propagation so slowly we see that uh, so, so so till here uh, this uh, the vegetated uh, 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 front was uh, was pushing the bare soil front but here as we increase a the reverse happens so with time the bare soil uh, front it started pushing the uh, the vegetated front so the direction of the wave front it changes but we can also observe here is uh, one more thing that eta species it is much more resilient sorry eta species is less resilient than the row species uh, if if we consider uh, periodic precipitation so row species is able to survive even when there is high uh, periodicity high forcing strength but eta species it does it, it just disappear and we get bare soil solution so eta species is less resilient to these uh, periodic disturbances so here we have plotted this front uh, velocity so it shows uh, the similar behavior that the front velocity so here it is it is negative uh, showing that uh, uh, that the front it changes its direction and the front velocity it changes much more for row species than the eta species and the dashed line here it shows that uh, the the vegetative front it just disappear okay so uh so from from this uh, particular study what what we understood so uh, so here 
we have seen uh, that using this uh, this model um, uh, that yes we can have vegetation uh, oscillations and these vegetation oscillation they are likely to be result of both endogenous and exogenous factor uh, that act together and the endogenous factors they act to in induce damped oscillatory modes uh, whereas the exogenous factor they act to pump these modes to induce large amplitude resonant oscillations we also saw that the positive feedbacks between plant growth and water availability that are represented by uh, these two parameters eta and rho they can turn the bifurcation of bare soil state to the vegetated state from supercritical to subcritical and uh, in the subcritical parameter uh, regime due to the bistability uh, between bare soil and uniform uh, vegetation vegetation state collapsed to bare soil uh, uh, much early as the pre precipitation decreases so because of this oscillatory dynamics because of this oscillation uh, plant species with different feedback they collapse to bare soil at different precipitations so depending upon whether they have oscillatory inherit uh, oscillatory modes or not they uh, collapse at different uh, precipitation value and we also saw, saw that eta species uh, that have oscillatory modes they are less resilient to drought or any spatial disturbances uh, than the species without the, these modes so uh, so this study it gives us some insight uh, uh, to to like to how to approach this problem uh, of uh, of existence of oscillation in uh, uh, in uh, vegetation models or in plants so then uh, so this is one part of uh, of this study. So I am also going to discuss uh, some some of the results that uh, where we extended these results to include uh, a pool of species. So instead of just because uh, this model was uh, just for one species, so instead of just considering one species, if we consider uh, a pool of species. And then whether we can say something about because here we we saw that uh, due to oscillation the biomass it just collapsed to the bare soil uh, uh, solution, but what happens before the collapse? Can we say something about the precursors or the phenomena that just occur before the collapse? Can we say something about it? So we extended that study. So, uh, so as far as this part of the talk is concerned, uh, if if you are interested, then you can look at this paper. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so it was published in two thousand nineteen in the scientific report, and uh, yeah, and if you have any questions or anything, then you are uh, you are welcome to discuss. Uh, so now moving to the second uh, or the other part of the talk is. Uh, 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 so, so now we want, want to focus on this transition from the vegetated uniform solution to the bare soil solution. So this state transition, this is very well known. We encounter this uh, uh, in different fields. So, so all these examples I have taken in, uh, from internet, whether it's from uh, 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 clear to turbid, uh, lakes uh, turning from clear to turbid or uh, or the brain activity uh, that leads to uh, seizures or the climate change that we talk about or uh, the inflation in economy all these examples are the example of state transition so some of these transitions they can be slow in nature they can be gradual so so usually these uh, transition they occur when there is uh, uh, there is change in some parameters of the system so some parameter is changing and then the system uh, makes a transition or the, the system changes uh, from one state to the other so this transition it can be gradual so for example here so this transition can be uh, can be very smooth continuous or it can be abrupt. 
So this abrupt transition that we have just seen, it occurs when, uh, normally occurs when there is uh, multi-stability in the system. So then even the small change in parameter, it can lead to, uh, it can lead to drastic change in the state of the system. So, uh, so we are, we are interested in this, uh, in the, in the second category where there is an abrupt change uh, in the state of the system and and then it is important uh, if we if we want to know uh, uh, more about these transition then it is important to uh, uh, it is important to talk about uh, some early warning signals of this uh, these transition because these transition uh, they often have very important consequences as we have just seen that uh, the transition could be from a vegetated state to a bare soil state or uh, it can lead to desertification or a, uh, so normally it is from a productive state to uh, to an unproductive state so normally we would like to uh, uh, we would like to have some control over these transition and for that we need uh, knowledge about uh, some early warning signals uh, uh, that leads to these critical transition. So, so why do we need uh, these early warning signals? Because they in, they are the indicator of the loss of resilience, and they also indicate they also tells us about the imminent transition in time and imminent transition in space. So that is why we need to. Uh, we need to have a knowledge of these early warning signals. Uh, and normally these early warning signal uh, that have been studied in uh, literature, they are based on critical slowing down near the tipping point. So tipping point or in like bifurcation theory, we also say that uh, uh, we also call them uh, bifurcation points. Uh, and they are characterized by uh, by increase in variance and skewness or increase in autocorrelation in time or, or some kind of power law behavior. But the early warning signal that we have observed uh, during our study, it is very different from the early warning signal uh, that have been observed in, uh, in other studies that are related to, to these phenomena. So the, the transition or the collapse that we have observed, it it is uh, far away from the tipping point. So, so in our case, tipping point is the saddle load bifurcation. But uh, due to uh, this external forcing or periodicity in precipitation, uh, the collapse occur much before it, much before the system uh, approaches the uh, saddle load bifurcation. So, so then in, in that case, what could be these early warning signal to collapse? So to, to study that, we, we consider this, uh, 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 this, uh, this model. This is a two say a soil layer model. Uh, so it is similar to the model that uh, we have just uh, saw. Uh, uh, the only thing is that here we have considered two, uh, two soil layer instead of one. So, so one equation, the second, so first equation is, uh, is similar to the equation that we have uh, just saw for biomass density. The second equation is for soil water in top layer. And the second equation, the third equation is for uh, soil water in the bottom layer. And here uh, we have also considered um, since we wanted to make this model more general, then instead of considering just one species at a time, we consider a pool of species. And to incorporate uh, these different uh, species into our model, we defined a trade-off. Um, we de define a trade-off uh, between the species so basically, uh, so we, we consider different species uh, uh, of plants and we differentiate between these species um, uh, by a trade-off that they make 
between their ability to grow to increase their biomass and versus their ability to survive under uh, under stress conditions so there would be some species that will be uh, that will be good at uh, increasing their biomass but they will not be good at uh, uh, surviving if there is like there is water stress if there is scarcity of water whereas there will be some other species that will be uh, that will be good at uh, surviving where there is uh, there is less water but they may not be able uh, able to grow more and increase their biomass when there is plenty of water so so we have used uh, this trade off to differentiate one species from the other because there could be like there could be many characteristics uh, on the basis of which uh, one can distinguish between one species to other so here we have just uh, considered these two uh, two characteristics uh, so based on that uh, we define uh, this trade off and uh, and mathematically this is how uh, it it looks like so these are the equation so this capital lambda it represents uh, the growth rate and this ms it represents the mortality rate uh and this is how the trade off look like so so if a species is suppose it is at this end uh so did to uh, uh to denote a species we we use this parameter chi so chi equals to 1 is one extreme of the species and chi equals to 0 is the other extreme of the species so uh, chi equals to 0 means the species uh, that invest uh, uh yeah so uh, that invest more in uh, growth but that is not uh, very well uh, adapted to survive in uh, uh, in the stress condition whereas chi equals to 1 species is very well adapted adapted for uh, uh, the stress condition but it does not increase its biomass uh, uh, biomass uh, to that extent when there is a lot of water uh, and then there are species in between so the functional form of this trade off it can either be a linear trade off uh, or a concave trade off or a convex trade off and the shape of this uh, this uh, trade off it is uh, 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 it is uh, expressed in terms of this factor beta so if beta is equal to 1 then there is a linear trade off if beta is greater than 1 uh, then there is a convex uh, trade off and if beta is less than 1 then there is a concave trade off so for simplicity we have taken uh, the linear trade off between uh, between different species so if we do that then we can write the non dimensional model so i will not uh, go into the details of uh, this model uh, i think if you are interested then uh, yeah you can maybe look at the paper and then uh, then we can discuss uh, so this is the non dimensional model so now we have three variable we have biomass we have s1 that corresponds to the soil water content in the top layer of the soil and uh, s2 which uh, which represents the soil water content in the in the bottom uh, layer or the lower uh, layer of the soil so in this case again we uh, again we do the same uh, same analysis using uh, same bifurcation analysis so on uh, on x axis we have precipitation so for the case of constant precipitation so this is how uh, the species the uh, the two uh, the species at the extreme end corresponding to chi equals to 0 and chi equals to 1 it behaves so so there is a bare soil solution and this uh, these two species uh at high precipitation value they have uniform vegetation and then they loses stability 
uh, at this point and this is this is known as uh, uh, the p saddle node precipitation corresponding to saddle node bifurcation so this is for chi equals to 0 and this is for chi equals to 1 so chi equals to 1 species uh, just uh, to to recall it is the species that invest more in survival mechanism and less in growth so that is why it is able uh, able to maintain its biomass at lower values of precipitation whereas chi equals to 0 because it uh, it invest more in growth and less in the survival mechanism so it is it is uh, it uh, uh, it is it is the uh, it, uh, it collapses early uh, with respect to the biomass so what happens if instead of constant precipitation we consider periodic precipitation or the external periodic forcing so if we do that then uh, then what we find that that this uniform vegetation branch it loses its stability much before so I'm all, always saying that much before because we start with the uniform vegetation and then we lower the precipitation and then we see that where it loses its uh, its stability. So, so these uh, these branch it loses stability much before and it, it collapses to bare soil. So much before the saddle node bifurcation point is reached. So this is due to uh, the oscillations due to the external forcing. So now we ask this question that what happens just before the collapse? And interestingly, we found that the route to this collapse is through uh, the period doubling uh, bifurcation, period doubling route to chaos, and then collapse. So, so on, on the x-axis, we have precipitation here. Uh, so at high precipitation, um, so, so this is in the presence of uh, uh, external periodic forcing. Uh, so, so we have like period one, then uh, uh, P is high. Uh, as, and as we consider downshift in P, as we decrease P, then this period one goes to period two and period four and so on. So there is a cascade of period uh, doubling. And then we have uh, chaos. And there are periodic windows. So, so the bifurcation diagram uh, looks very similar to the one that we have for logistic map. And then this chaos, it leads to collapse. So the biomass, it just goes to zero. And we have also quantified it using uh, the uh, this uh, Lyapunov exponents. And this is the time series at various points corresponding to period one, two, four, and so on. Okay, so it is just to show that how uh, this uh, this region of period doubling and chaos, it changes uh, for different species, for chi equals to zero, chi equals to zero point five, and chi equals to one. Okay, so the so the, this chi equals to uh, one species, it has this uh, this region very very small, whereas chi equals to zero species, so that uh, so chi equals to uh, zero species that invest more in growth uh, so chi equals to zero uh, species uh, is less resilient uh, uh, it invests less in uh, the survival mechanism and hence it has uh, more it has uh, the wider region where uh, where there is chaos and period doubling whereas chi equals to one species that invest more in survival mechanism it has uh, it has this chaotic uh, region uh, very small so yeah so it is uh, uh, it is the similar bif bifurcation diagram with the uh, with the uh, uh, with the forcing amplitude a so here also we see this period doubling So this is uh, uh, this is the behavior of the system in the parameter space of p and chi. 
because we want to see that how different species that are defined along this trade off chi equals to 0 to chi equals to 1 it behaves uh, uh, as we change the precipitation so when precipitation is low in this region <clears throat> there is bare soil then this line corresponds to the saddle node bifurcation this is the chaotic chaotic region and below this this is all uh, all bare soil so this is the region where uh, this is the region of bi stability and and there's period 2 and here we have uh, uh, oscillation with period 1 so we have also plotted uh, the power spectra to see that indeed there are uh, uh, there are period 2 just before the collapse and also to uh, to test the stability of uh, of this phenomena that how resilient this phenomena is uh, we we also introduce stochastic uh, stochasticity in rainfall so if we consider stochastic rainfall uh then in that case uh, the uh, uh because of this uh, stochasticity this uh, collapse it occurs uh, uh, the point shifts to lower value of p and uh, just before collapse so suppose if we take a point over here and here we have signature of period 2 so without stochasticity there is just period 1 at these two points but if uh, uh, if we introduce uh, stochasticity in uh, the uh, in the precipitation then we have signature of period period 2 so this signature of period 2 it is believed to be a a precursor or the early warning signal to collapse because it is present everywhere whether we have stochasticity or 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 in any other case before the collapse uh, so you that you have five more minutes oh okay yeah so i'm i'm almost done yeah okay just, so this is just to uh, just to summarize uh, what what we have observed here in uh, the peak i space so this is uh, the vegetated state saddle saddle point branch uh this is uh, this is for periodic precipitation and if we introduce stochast uh, stochasticity in the precipitation then uh the the points at which the collapse occur it shifts towards higher value of p and then we have taken uh, some some points here to see that before the collapse in each case uh how does the power spectra look like and in each case we found that there is uh, there is a signature of i mean at some point the signature is very weak but there is always uh, uh always some evidence of period 2 uh, before the collapse so period 2 uh, can be regarded as a precursor to the collapse of uh, vegetation to to the bare soil so this is the overview of of the results that that we have got here so at high high precipitation we have a functional state uh, which is the uniform vegetation and then as we lower the precipitation then we have Uh, the speed uh, uh, doubling route to chaos and after that uh, the vegetation it just collapses uh, uh, i mean it collapses to the bare soil even the smallest of disturbances can lead to this collapse and uh, the er earlier uh, reported early warning signal they deals with the collapse near this point near this critical saddle node point but here we observe the collapse which is much before before the saddle node point is achieved so that is why our early warning signal is uh, is different from uh, uh, and even the mechanism is different from what has been reported earlier so 
yeah so so from this study uh, this is what what we have observed that vegetation sh uh, shows uh, period doubling route to chaos before collapsing to bare soil and different species respond to changes in pre precipitation differently uh, meaning that species that invest more in growth enters into period doubling regime sooner with precipitation downshift as compared to species that invest more in survival mechanism and also species uh, that invest more in survival mechanism are le less prone to period doubling and chaos so hence we have seen those uh, the uh, those areas they were much smaller for uh, uh, the sky equals to uh, uh, sky equals to uh, one species and stochasticity in rainfall it can cause vegetation to collapse even much earlier meaning at higher value of precipitation showing signatures of 2 to 1 response before the collapse so this 2 to 1 response uh, of vegetation it can uh, yeah so it can act as a uh, early warning signal for desertification Uh, so this part of the talk it has been uh, published in the, in this paper so if you uh, can look at this paper so with this uh, yeah thank you very much for your attention and uh, yeah it's it's time for a few questions yeah yeah sure <clears throat> Uh, Sangeeta, this is Lakshmanan. Yeah, uh, yes, sir. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Uh, I, this is a very interesting talk. So I enjoyed it. So I have a few questions, uh, simple questions. So what does this chaos imply in the last sentence? You mean to say chaos means uh, its vegetation dying down? Uh, is, sorry, sorry, sir. Can you please what repeat? What does this chaos imply? Does that mean uh, does that mean the vegetation die down or? Uh, so so chaos basically means that uh, uh, the dynamics of the vegetation with time it is it is very unpredictable. Uh, so so of course in field study it is very difficult uh, to see that uh, see the chaotic behavior in vegetation, but it simply means that it is. Uh, uh, the way in which the biomass density changes with time it is very unpredictable and then it could be i mean sometimes the the plants they can increase their biomass sometimes the biomass will be extremely low and it is very random and unpredictable and that could uh, indicate that there is something wrong with the, uh, with the system in general and uh, and then uh, it it could indicate some kind of collapse of biomass Okay, so have you have you compared with some experimental results uh, in Israel that would be, I mean, they have dry regions uh, and uh, are there any experimental results with which you can compare your model? Uh, yes, sir. so uh, so I mean there are few studies where they have reported. Uh, uh, so so they are like biennial plants. Or there are some plant species that flower like alternate years or every three or four years. So this this has has been observed, but uh, observing chaos uh, or chaotic dynamics in vegetation plant, it is yeah it is very difficult to it it has not been observed and uh, yeah it's very difficult to even uh, kind of formulate or uh, that how how uh, formulate such field experiments. Even even this biostability. So what does it imply? Yes, I mean, in your model, uh, mm -hmm. you also talk about biostability at different uh, different times, like uh, subcritical case, supercritical case, and so on. So, what does that imply for biomass? So, how does it the uh, vegetation can have two two possible solutions uh, uh, in the biomass? Yeah. So, so yeah. So, it depends upon the initial condition, uh, and biostability means that in that region, the biomass or the ecosystem it will be uh, it will be uh, less resilient. So, even the smallest disturbance, it can uh, if it 
it it can lead uh, uh, the system to go from one state to other and if suppose uh, uh, so it the the that disturbance it could be uh, some like local disturbance like uh, forest fire or clear cutting or anything so and if that leads the system to say uh, to to desertification or uh, Uh, or like bare soil kind of state, then it will be very difficult for the system to come back to uh, uh, to the original, the vegetated state. So biostability means that in that region, it will be uh, it will be very less re resi uh, resilient and very prone to external or local disturbances. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Very nice. Thank you. Very Thank much. you. Sangeeta, there is a question in the chat box. I think. Yes, sir. Last one. Okay. Yeah. So there's a question. After period two oscillations in vegetation, will there not be chances of period three oscillation for some specific conditions, or it would always uh, sign to collapse or to chaos? So yes. Uh, so we we have found under some uh, some condition there could be period three also. So again. Uh, so uh, so. but even uh, when we have like period 3 then then we will have chaos uh, so before colla collapse we will always have uh, have uh, chaotic dynamics this is what we have found in our like simulation results but there is possibility of period 3 also sure so any other questions no there is one more yeah. question so what is strongly uniform uh initial conditions okay so by strongly uniform initial condition we mean that we uh, we start with uh, uh with biomass uh which is same uh like uniform biomass so so if we are considering uh, 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 uh say a spatial terrain then for uh, at each point we give we give the same value for the biomass so for example we start with like b equals to i don't know 0.1 for for every point so that means strongly uh, uh, uniform initial condition but uh, but as uh, but the case that i have discussed here so here we we started with non uniform uh, initial condition so where we start uh, study the front yeah so here we start with non uniform uh, uh, initial condition so half of the terrain or half of the space it has uh, some finite value of b and half of it we have given b equals to 0 so we started with uh, with this initial condition so th this is non uniform Okay, so there is another uh, question. Okay, uh, okay, so there is no more question. Yeah. So, any other uh, questions? Yeah. Uh, so I have one question, Sangeeta. Is yes, sir. Whether these equations uh, valid for a particular region, or is a universal model? Uh. So. So here we. Uh, so so this is uh, i mean uh, if if we so this is for a for a particular region for example uh, uh, this is for dry land ecosystems so uh, 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 so if if we want to model a particular region then accordingly we will have to choose uh, uh, choose these parameters so uh, so for example the parameters that we have chosen for uh, for this model so uh, so 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 they are similar to uh, to some uh, some like so they are uh, they are for dry land so nam uh, so in particular uh, uh, in particularly the i mean they are good for uh, namibian uh, 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 types of uh, uh, namibian type uh, uh, this uh, dry lands right uh, so uh, so but yeah but some modification of these models they have been used to uh, to uh, to study 
uh, other kind of uh, uh, this uh, plan system as well. So, any other question from the uh, side? Uh, sir, this is Dinesh. I have yes. a question. Yes. Uh, please go to the bifurcation slide. I think period doubling route to chaos. Uh, okay. This one? Um, yeah, yes, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, here, uh, the, the period doubling point, uh, one period to uh, two period. Yeah. And the Leopen X point uh, nearly zero. So I think uh, there is uh, in bifurcation point uh, there is non-periodic solution. Uh, no, so, sorry, sorry, I did not understand. You, um, um, yeah. Here, the in Leopen exponent, uh, our uh -huh. yeah, our bifurcation point, uh, mm -hmm. the one period to two period. Uh -huh. uh, here the Leopen exponent value nearby zero. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so it, it touches maybe, zero. Yes. Yeah. yeah I think it uh, may have any some non-periodic solutions. Yeah. So 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 this is uh, the largest Lyapunov exponent. Yeah, yes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it it is yeah. So it is near to zero. It's not exactly zero, but yeah, it's near to zero. Maybe the scales are chosen in such a way that it it seems that it uh, so it approaches zero, but it's not zero. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yes. Because whenever there is a change, uh, 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 see, whenever there is a change in period from like uh, when, when there is subsequent uh, period doubling, uh, then I think this, this is the same thing you observe in logistic map also. That one of the, uh, this uh, Lyapunov exponent, it will be zero. And the other one, whenever there is a period doubling, then uh, the largest one, it will approach zero. It will not go to zero. It will approach zero. And then, uh, uh, then it will become uh, like negative, more negative. OK, thank you, ma'am. Um, I think. No more questions from students' side. Oh, so, yes. shall we wind it up there? Because I'm afraid we don't have much time to talk about this CSAR is wrong. Uh -huh. Okay, <laughs> okay, yeah. yeah. I think, yeah, so I think yeah. yeah, it's better to talk about uh, some other time. Uh, yeah, I sure, think. sure, sir. Yeah. So, so, so I want to conclude the session by thanking Sangeeta Rani for for by for giving a very wonderful talk um, she gave the how she model a real situation and got very uh, um, the results which he got matches with the environment also the real issue matches with the real experiments also so it's a very I mean it's a very interesting talk so with this I wanted to wind up this uh, I, once again, I thank uh, Sangeeta for giving a talk, okay, for accepting our invitation and giving a talk to an online dance department. Thank you, Sangeeta. Thank you, sir. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much. I will write to you, Sangeeta, about the oh, other things, the other problems. Okay, okay, oh, sure, okay. sir. Thank you. Thank you for sir. Thank you.